We have the red Enigma player Maru at the top side against the blue Man of the West player Bambi, also known as Sigtilion at the bottom side. So, you know, the clash. I think Man is actually a good faction against evil faction. So indeed, the biggest win rate of the Man faction is when Man is facing against evil. They are struggling against elves and also against dwarves, but against Mordor, goblins, and also Engmar, they seem to not to be too bad, you know? But we shall see. Engmar is still an incredibly skilling faction, strong early game, strong mid game, and extremely strong in lead game. And Engmar, to be honest with you guys, from me, from my you know personal perspective, Engmar doesn't seem to have a matchup, which is bad. Engmar actually doesn't have a stage of the game which feels weak you know what i'm saying normally like mortal faction has like a rough early game a little bit but engmar doesn't even have that engmar is a very strong early game with the early transition possibility into the cavalry infantry you can spam a lot you can go immediately uh, to the wolf riders you have so many different options in lead game i mean <laughs> come on now you have seen this already with your own eyes the long shot felvin combination no counterplay, no counterplay. So three farms into the barracks. On the other side, the Engma play is building up three mills. Hall of the Kingsman into the mill number four. So Bambi normally likes to play with multiple farms, but that's not this time. He actually builds like a normal opening. Not offensive barracks though. And the builder from Maru is gonna be used once again. Dude, Maru likes to do that all the time, by the way. Every time Maru is, you see Maru playing, he will be using one of his builders to scout, which Makes me think that maybe going to cavalry at the beginning of the game can be actually a big punishment against Maru's gameplay. So you can easily kill this builder, you know, and punish him big time. There is delay, yes, but only one minute today. Only one minute delay. Banana King Beta is on this boss in the chat. With his personal emo emote in the chat, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, custom animated emote. There is Gollum looking for some sneaky little hobbitses. Gundabad orcs are turning. Uh, you know, the soldiers, they should be able to win this fight, I think. I sh they should be, right? Yeah, they are winning this. Definitely. I mean, with the whole ground stand or aggressive stance and the shield ball formation combination, you have actually more armor and you also deal more damage. It's a great combination, which is only possible for the units like Urukai and also the soldiers. One Gundabad Orc was actually able to sneak through, and the farm here is going to be definitely taken down. Uh, you got to be just careful about the Tram Master. When you lose the Tram Master, you are doomed. But they are slightly outside of the, outside of the range of the Fortress. Rallying Police been used on the two Soldier Battalion. Let's see how much damage Bambi is going to be able to deal to his opponent. Hey, Rabbi, welcome. Okay, so he's trying to get inside the jeans, and he'll be able to. Uh, the question is, can he take it down? Very smart move here from the Engma player, but it's not going to be enough. Maru's meal is going down, definitely. And I think Man won't be able to deal much more damage than that. But on the other side, he was also able to defend himself quite nicely. So look at this. The soldier spam is real, guys. I'm telling you, we see more soldier spam in 2022 in the version 8.5, then we actually see Mordor Orc spam or the Goblin Goblin spam. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, men turned into a spammy faction. <laughs> you know, that's, that's like crazy. And it feels to, it seems to be effective too. It seems to be working out. And never change a running system. Look at this. Now with the barracks at the bottom side, he will be able to pressure this all the time. The barracks is also protecting the farm, and the stone behind the barracks is also protecting this area completely. So it's hard for Engmar to commit against that and to deal the damage he's looking for. And now he has to deal with two waves of units. One is coming from the middle, one is coming from the bottom side. There is one Gundabad Orc left. What are they doing? They are doing nothing. They are actually dancing in front of the farm from Bambi. Maru is not paying attention. Now he does. Losing time is not a good thing. You gotta be always proactive. You need to do something in RTS games and you need to kind of keep your APM as high as you potentially can which is even more important if you are spamming lots of units for example with the goblin faction if you have like four or five goblin caves upon the field your APM is going to be essential for you to make a great use of the spam the mills are going down one by one Maru is falling apart and men are legit out
lone tower, that's do nothing actually, you know. When you have a lone tower, you want to make sure that you have some arches to put them inside. To have like the maximum effect of the lone tower summon. Without arches inside, they are not very useful. The thing is though, you gotta keep in mind that the lone tower is by far tankier in compared to a tower you can build. Benani? <laughs> And I think Engbar is kind of like, he give up, you know what I'm saying. He's like waiting to his, for his ending. There is nothing he can do. And Maru will be actually defeated quite fast in the first game against Ectelion. Ectelion, the player from Argentina, is getting the first W. Yeah, it's a mid of time, boys. He doesn't even bother doing anything. I think he just legit went AFK or something. <laughs> what is going on in this game? Now the commitment, the knights, if they touch it though, look at the DPS boys. Yeah, it's a matter of time, you know, in like less than 10 seconds, the Engmar player will be defeated. And that's going to be the first victory for the player from Argentina in the best of seven. It's okay though, because it's a best of seven at the end of the day. It means even if you lose one or two games, you can still work your way up. I mean, we have seen a similar situation yesterday. Smokey was legit leading 3-0 against Sauron, and then Sauron started to come back. We have the red Mordor player Maru against the blue Isengard player Bambi. So it's Sauron versus Saruman. Burning into the Uruk pit. On the other side, we see two slaughterhouses coming up for Mordor. Okay, so early on we will see definitely the Orcs and Isengard could legit go for the Vipen of Dunland against, you know, Mordor. Because the problem with the Isengard faction early on is the units are too expensive. So your Uruks, they cost 400. So basically one Urukai costs you as much as 5 Orc Battalion. Think about that for a single second. For the same price, you can legit recruit 5 of them, you know? <laughs> And for that reason, Vipen of Dunland can be actually a good start against factions like Goblins and also against Mordor, because the Vipemen, they are still stronger than both these units. Like, they can win 1v1 situation against Goblin Warriors, they can easily win against Orc Warriors, and on top of that, with the Torches, they can actually, you know, one-shot your structures, and every time they deal damage to them, you also steal money from your opponent. Uh, that's important to keep in mind, you are stealing money, you know? It's like a win-win situation, it's not like a pillage you that you get money for killing enemy units it's you making enemy poor while you grow rich you know it's double effective so urukai they are definitely way stronger than orcs but orcs can stall they can actually buy you some time you can use them as a body blocking unit right in front of your buildings to deny the uruks to take down your slaughterhouses and by the time they finally deal with the orcs you can get more and more and more and more orcs recruited and if you can survive the early mid game, your late game as Mordor is going to be extremely strong. He has the maps because some Ukrainian helped him. Nice man, thank you. <laughs> I think melee only heroes can shoot from top. Oh really? You can actually, in this case, you can, for example, put in Boromir into the tower and he will be able to shoot. Really? Doesn't make too much sense to me, but okay didn't know that because i've never seen this somebody doing that you know what i'm saying i've never i've not seen anybody putting borrow me into a lone tower summon okay the slaughterhouse is gonna be taken down the orcs were definitely not in the position he's going for a counter attack nice clamping from maru but keep in mind that maru is one this zero is behind so orcs. these are Orokai. their armor is thick and their shields broad their armor is thick and their shields broad Okay, so the furnace is going to be taken down. That's good. I did. Oh, maybe not. That's going to be close. He's using Bombard. When you when you see your opponent using Bombard, you can also move. But, you know, it's too late. The furnace has been taken down. The Uruks are still alive. Maybe they should just run away now. When they are level 2, you know what I'm saying. They can always get away and recover from the damage they took and get back to full size. In the meantime, we see a furnace number 3. Warchan is on cooldown. I is on cooldown. 400 command points against 350, so Isengard went actually for like a very early barracks, but he could only still be able to take down one single slaughterhouse. That's the problem, because Oryx are being spammed all the time, which actually makes the early game from Mordor not even that weak anymore, you know? Because you can afford to build like three Orc pits when you have like 350 command points, and then you have like crazy production speeds. You can outspam anything you want, you can outspam any faction you want easily. That's why I believe 
in long terms, cavalry is needed. Or white men of that land are needed to keep up with the spam or to trample down the oryx. The easiest way to kill them is just to trample them. If you have to fight against them in a sword fight, you can still win against them, but it's gonna take you some time, which is time enough for your opponent to get even more orcs, more orcs, more orcs on the field. No problem, Anubis. I mean, I'm used to these questions. I have also people asking me, uh, how many games, is this best of five or best of three, you know? Or I have also people asking me, who's playing? Who is the blue? Uh, who is the blue and Isengard player? Like questions, you can just answer yourself by just taking a look into your screen. But I'm used to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm used to it. Like the most funny thing is, you know, still I make like a don't. You know, I was. I think that's the easiest installation tutorial which was ever made for Battle for Middle Earth games. I know the people; they have no patience. So. You gotta make it short, you gotta make it fast, you know? So I was making a legit, a download tutorial video for BFME 2 in less than four minutes, right? Four minutes directly to the subject, only mentioning the most important things to get your game to work. And then you see the same question, which was legit answered in a four minute video. How impatient can you be to not even be able to watch a four minute video, which exactly tells you what to do. And that's unbelievable. People are so lazy nowadays, you know? And then you have questions like, can we team viewer? You know, team viewer. <laughs> this, I mean, 450 command points against 350 for Mordor. Mordor is putting counter pressure though, but also Isengard is trying to do the same. The Uruks are still remaining on the field. They are still alive. We have crossbowmen level two and there comes the first mountain troll from the troll cage. And how is Goblin Reese? Um, Goblin Reese, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a randomized thing. So they pick random and when you are lucky, maybe we get the chance to see goblins in the next game. Goblins are also in the game, of course. What game is this? <laughs> hey, is this a BFM Reforged? Or is this Age of Mythology? Reskin, remaster? <laughs> you know what? what's the most funny thing, guys? You gotta go on my comments. <laughs> you gotta go on my comments. I was making yesterday a, a, a prank, you know, like a, like an April Fool's video. Like there is a kappa on the video, two kappas are hidden, you know, like BFM Reforged, the first gameplay, the beta, early access. And then I have I have people commenting in the YouTube video. <laughs> Listen to me. They're like, oh, hey, this actually looks like BFME 1. Is this really BFME Reforged? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Let's call them naive, you know, because they are maybe just trusting me too much. They're like, when Shanks is saying that this is BFME Reforged, this has to be BFME Reforged, but it just like looks too much like BFME 1 to me. <laughs> you know, sometimes they make my day, you know, when I, when I read them, I'm laughing like crazy. Okay, so 425 command points for Isengard, 525 for Mordor. Mordor is actually recovering and the trolls are hard to deal with. So one troll needs, you know, like, if Maru can micro with that... Oh! Oh, that was really close. He was almost able to eat him. You know, when you micro with a troll nicely, you can actually pressure your opponent so incredibly a lot. It will be hard. Four twenty-five and Isengard is still five power points in a bit away from the weapon of Dalian summon or the devastation. I think devastation would be a better call. And it's like a trolling choice. If you summon the weapon of Dalian, if there are trolls on the field, trolls can smash them. So ideally, weapon of Dalian and also orc summon from the Engma faction are only good if the enemy has no calf or no infantry destroying monster like a troll. You know. And Mordor is up to seven power points, so he needs three and a half. Three and a quarter to get his own industry a lot. War Riders finally on the field. Uh, no heroes all game long, by the way. We need eventually Lourdes for Isengard or Sharku. Mordor could recruit Govmog. The Oryxes at the bottom side. Come, my friends, the orcs are going to war. Isengard is pressuring nicely, though, with the war packs. He will be able to take down the slaughterhouse, too. That's good. Um, in the meantime, Mordor is trying to achieve something, but the longer he waits, the less impactful this push is going to be. 
Now he's gonna run into the Vork Riders and look at this. One trample to rule them all. Okay, 525 versus 475. Mordor has to get the industry unlocked. Somehow, ASCP. Maybe use it on this one, you know, in the front. Because look at the protection. I mean, not really protected, to be honest with you. Because look at this. You can just walk in there, you know what I'm saying? It's like an open gate. You know, you have like an open area. You can enter this. And then it's even hard to defend this, you know? Sometimes when you build wrong, you actually handicap yourself. So if you, for example, leave gap between the buildings and your opponent is able to get in through in between the buildings, you literally hurt yourself more than your opponent. It makes to defend this almost impossible. Kribin is going to be used, but it's going to be on cooldown very, very soon. The Viper of Tannent is the choice from Bambi. Oh, is he going to go for it? Um, yeah, he's going to use it behind to take down the Slaughterhouse level 2. The troll is not in the, in the right spot. And this five man actually can be quite successful. And, you know, along the fact, if he can take this on, take, you know, if he if he will be, if he can take this down, he will be definitely getting a lot of stuff done. That's a level two slaughterhouse, minus 75 command points. I see you. And he has 10 power points in the bank. But he let this wipe man off the not only destroy his stuff, but also that he doesn't demolish stuff in the time. And you see this, every time they attack you, you see this plus one, plus one, plus one, you know? It doesn't sound too crazy, but keep in mind, it's a constant thing. So each of them, every time they touch you, and they touch you multiple times, they still one, 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 one from you, from your money. You lose money when they do that. They are, you need to deal with them ASCP, you, or you need to demolish the buildings, you know? So look at look amount, look the amount of damage Isengard just dealt to Mordor. The damage cannot be dealt in return because the orcs they cannot really do much about the situation. And once the Isengard player is able to deal with the mountain troll, he should be good to go. Look at this. He will be able to destroy like what? One furnace? And he lost like everything. You know, he will also lose this one, by the way, to the warp packs. Right? It's gonna be close. Him or let's can he do it? No. Nah, it was close, but it's only a level one anyway. And he went even for the war chant. To defend. That's gonna delay his 10 power point industry. He's down to 350. He was at 650 at some point, like two minutes ago. There was a very good weapon of Dunland summon from Bambi. He's now up to nine power points after it already. It means he needs like six for his 15. And Long John, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Long John Bitcoin. Hey, we have you know we got a Bitcoin millionaire guys in the chat. Oh, creeping action. Ten power points in the bank. Oh, the builder. You know what's sometimes funny? That the golem is lurking sometimes around your fortress, and the fortress doesn't shoot at him. Why not? You know, it's like a. I mean, he's like a neutral thing, but you can target him. You know, but you can only target him if you. I think when you e-click, you cannot even hit him. You need to right-click him, right? That's one of these things. Oh, the orcs are marching forward, but, you know, at some point, the orcs, they will lose their value. And you need to find something stronger than that. Easterlings, eventually, or more trolls are required, but Mordor's economy is not looking that great. He has the 10 power points now, but the question is, can he protect the slaughterhouse with the industry buff? And, you know, it's very risky. He has all the slaughterhouses in, at the same point. Like, that's all he got. You know, we see one, two, three, four slaughterhouses. That is the offensive furnace from Isengard. And I don't see any offensive slaughterhouses from Mordor. There we go. He was using it. 51 you get. 51 resources. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Vorks are biting the bat from the, from the mountain troll. They are almost not hurting him though. Or do they? They actually hurt him. Oh, the, oh, Sharku is there. That's what it... Oh, slap him. But Sharku is the troll slayer. Look at him, boys. He's like poke face. Poke champ face. Oh, okay. But Kribin is able to shut down the leadership bonuses. So he, they don't get any, any benefits, but it's okay. They will be still able to take it down. That's good. The level 2 furnace is down. Isengard is dropping down to 500 command points. The counter pressure is going to happen. He will be finally able to take down the slaughterhouse in the front. With Sharku, who is going to get almost a full level, just destroying one single slaughterhouse. 
I mean, it's kind of insane the amount of experience you get from destroying one single slaughterhouse with heroes. They level up like crazy, you know, some of them at least. Arvin is one of these heroes. If Arvin destroys a building, uh, Malone Tree, she will get a full level, you know? The Furnace level 3, oh, that's gonna be painful. That's a nice counter attack from Maru, I gotta be honest, guys. Very nice done. And he's going to be get to an even score in, the, in, ter in terms of the command points with his opponent from this one push. Destroyed a level 2 furnace and a level 3 furnace with orcs and easterlings all alone. So I think Bambi was making... Oh, and Sharku! Oh, that was really close. Sharku almost got <laughs> went down too. And I think if Maru would have played this a bit better, he could have defended this. Especially the level 3 furnace was given up just for no reason. And Mordor is getting lots of money from this one behind. So keep that in mind, Mordor can still work his way up to win this game, but now we fuel the fires. So that means in total you will get from your Lamina Mills 70% more money, 70%. So you can now start spamming them all the time. However, on a map like Firin Deal, there are not many trees on the field. Look at this map, like you won't have too much value from the from the Lamina Mills. Lamina Mills are only good if there is a bunch of trees around, you know? Because the workers cannot produce money for you if there are no trees to be harvest, harvested. And another level 2 furnace is going to be given up. For no reason. Like, this is so... Uh, dude, I don't know what to say sometimes. Like, those mistakes can actually easily turn this game around. And it does turn the game around. The only good thing for Isengard is that he's at 4 power points after the Field of Fires, but remember that Mordor has the chance to go for the Worm Summon, 5 power points after. And while, you know, Field of Fires gives you Eco, it doesn't give you any strength in terms of pushing or defending, right? But the Worm can be used to deal incredible amount of economical damage to you. Ten power points in the bank, and he's getting there. He's getting closer and closer, and he keeps the pressure up. He keeps the Isengard in a, in a check situation, and Isengard has to respect that because he just lost too much. This is a very important furnace to be kept alive, and yeah, I think that's the only level two furnace. Yeah, he has only one single meal. He needs to definitely spam a lot of them. I mean, this looks like a like a forbidden pool situation, you know, like forbidden pool from the films. It's in a map South and Italian in BFM1. 11 power points collected, and Isengard is up to 7. I mean, the money is gonna look good very soon. The second he has more and more Lime on the field, he will grow rich, definitely. But he gotta do that now. However, the problem with the Lime Mills is they don't give you any command points. Even statues give you command points, but Lime Mills they don't. So I think when you could make so that the Lime Mills are giving you also 10 command points each, maybe it would be a good idea. Because think about the Lamer Mill versus the statue, you know what I'm saying? Statue gives you fear resistant, leadership, and on top of that also 10 command points. You get like triple benefit from building one building which is extremely cheap. Sharku is almost level 6. The furnace is going to be taken down. There was a, almost a level 3 furnace by the way, that's going to be painful. Isengard is going to drop down to 600 command points, 575 to be precise. And Mortor is at 550, and Mortor is getting really close. Really close for the Worm Summon. Here's a Uruk Pit level 2 and level 3 is incoming. So Isengard is planning to recruit the Uruk Deathbringers very soon. Age of Mythology. Oh, we have Kofmok the, on the field, boys. The Freddy Krueger. Look at this handsome guy. It's the first hero from Mordor. We have seen Sharku as the first hero from Isengard. The first and only hero so far. I'm actually curious how long, how many attacks you will need to take down a Uruk Pit level 3 with the Worm. I mean, we will find out eventually very soon. Because I'm assuming that's going to be the target from Maru. He will be trying to take this one down. Lamar Mills are glowing, shining bright like a diamond. We see in total only... Yeah, only two Lamar Mills. That's not, I'm actually curious about how much money you get. You get 13, right? Yeah, 13. So without the uh, Field of Fires, it's actually useless. <laughs> you know, let's be real. The troll is moonwalking. Uh, Gothmog is needs to be level 2. You know, the level 5 doesn't really matter anything against Isengard. The fear resistant do, does nothing. Isengard has no fear. And he has now the Worm Summon, boys. The industry is going to be used very soon once again, eventually on the same slaughterhouse behind, which is level 3. 
You have also Black Oryx now from Isengard coming from the inn. From both the sides, by the way, he will be able to recruit plenty of Black Oryx, which are much, much better than the regular Oryx from the Orpid level 1. Oh, industry has been used, and he's holding his worm. I mean, the worm should be used by now, I think. Like this and this. If you can take down these production buildings, they would be so huge. The Deathbringers are actually quite cheap. They cost only 1,000 each. And another troll has been taken down. Finally, Worm is unlocked and will be used on the Vork Pit. So, he can take down the Furnace too. But I think taking down the production building is going to slow down Isengard even more. The Worm's damage is nerfed. I think you need now 3 hits. Yeah, barely, you see? You don't two-shot it anymore. This one, this creature was actually dealing an insane amount of damage. He was literally one-shotting almost a level 3 furnace. Now the question is, how fast can he actually take down the Uruk Pit level 3? Because the tower, the fortress, and the Uruk Pit is shooting him down. That's gonna be the first attack. I think he needs four attacks in total. I might be wrong. Two. Can he do it with three attacks? Yeah, it's still, it's still very strong. <laughs> it's still very strong. That's a very tanky building with 6,000 HP, boys. The Worm Summon is so devastating, actually, against buildings. It's unbelievable. But it's a 15 power point summon after all. It kind of makes sense. Rohirrim could do the same. So we have Kofmok almost level 5. There is no Uruk Deathbringer, by the way. He lost the Uruk Pit. And that feels bad, man, you know? Here's one. Here's one. Okay, I take it back. He was able to recruit one of them. But that's going to be the one and only. Because the feels bad moment is like when you invest so much time and also money to get your Uruk Pit all the way from level 1 to level 3. And by the time you do that, there is a worm being summoned on your Uruk Pit. And your Uruk Pit is getting literally 3-shotted. It's so bad. Oh my! Does, how many power points does he actually have? Dude, the dragon is coming in clutch, boys. And Maru doesn't say a word. You know he's angry. You know he's angry. GG. Well played. Ectilion does it one more time. We have the red Isengard play, uh, red Ingmar player Maru at the bottom right side against the blue Isengard player Bambi at the top left side. Who was already able to win as Isengard against Mordor in the previous game. Okay, so Isengard against Ingmar. Hmm, hmm. We will see our early Hall of the Kingsman. Early Parax. Bambi is building up two furnaces and he will be building up eventually the Uruk pit. Because that's the only thing that can actually work against. I mean, you can also go for the Vork Pit, I guess. But I think the Uruk Pit is the most reliable structure as Isengard against Engmar. Remember, Engmar has the chance to turn the Thralmaster into anything he wants. Oh, okay. He might get punished for it. The question is, will he turn them into the Gundabad Oryx? Or will he turn them into the Pikemen and start creeping? I think the best thing what he can do is turn them into the Gundabad Oryx and rush. Rush him down. Or you can, oh, you can even wait patiently. That's the good thing about this situation, right? You can just send them all the way to this location until you see the enemy units. And the second you see war packs, you can turn them into the pikemen units. And then you can counter them. That means they cannot approach you. And then you can use the pikemen to take down the furnace. The furnace here, the furnace here, right? That would be a very good situation if you can do that. I think that's the plan. You just need to be patient. There is no reason of rushing into the Gundabad Oryx. Because that's one of the strength of the Engmar faction, right? With the Thrummaster unit. You can... Transform them into anything you want. It's like a Pokemon. You know, there was a Pokemon, guys, right? In the in the Pokemon world, the Pokemon was able to transform himself into anything he wants. And that's the Trial Master. Guten Abend, Jean. Glad to see you in the chat. All right, he will be turning them into the Gundabad orcs. Uh, okay, I mean, Creepin is gonna be used. And why? <laughs> why? <laughs> just he had to just turn him. I, I think he just saw the Uruk pit, but not the Vork pit. That's very unlike a situation. Can he defend this though now? Can he take down the Trial Master? He's aiming for it. Oh, but the furnace is gonna be taken down. I think it's okay though. But he could be this could be much, much better for Ingmar. Much, much, much better. Like imagine this not be a you know Trial Master, uh, a Gundabad, but a, a pikeman instead. You know? But it's okay. He was still able to destroy one of the furnaces without war chance, and he was forcing his opponent to use the Kribin defensively. That's like a win-win situation in my book. And the next attack is going to include definitely a Pikeman unit. So Pikeman... Oh, the Builder is trapped! Maru! Maru! Maru is doing it again! Maru! 
Can he save the builder somehow? Kill him, kill him, kill him, bite him, bite him, bite him. Charlie beat me, Charlie beat me. Charlie beat him indeed. And that's the thing about Maru, he does it every single time. Like the builder is losing his way, going all the way to the enemy fortress. And then, you know, you have like so many options to take him down. That's a punishment. Because now you gotta invest 500 to, re you know, rebuy another builder. Right, 500 is a lot of money, especially early on. That means the money from the creep has to be invested into buying a builder, which didn't need to happen. Like, he could have used the money elsewhere, you know what I'm saying? Build the Wolf Tan already, or, or the second Hall of the Kingsman. He had so many more options. But in this game, you definitely need a second builder. One builder is not gonna, enough. It's not gonna be enough. Okay, there comes the first counter push. The Vorpex, there is no defense, and this meal is gonna be definitely taken down. Will he recruit any wolf riders or wolf packs? No, it's not going to be the case. There is no pikeman until now, but the pikeman, the first one, is going to be entering the battlefield. The warchant is going to be used now, and Kribin is still on cooldown. It means buff against no debuff and no buff from the Isengard player. Now, this can be extremely successful if he can see those crossbowmen. Was he able to see them? I think he did. He knows where they are. No, he doesn't. Okay, I take it back. He, he, they are looking for it, though. They are like, where are those, where are those crossbowmen? In this map, Sakura Forest, there are multiple opportunities for you to actually advance, you know, offensively. That's exactly what Isengard player is doing. He's placing a, a furnace right in the middle on the bottom left side. Oh, the commitment, the warp pit is going to be demolished to get a bit money back. Isengard can creep, uh, Engma can creep. Maru is actually doing a good job this game. Another furnace is going to be taken down. That means no more warp packs anytime soon for Bambi. Bambi is losing a lot. The buffed units against non-buffed units from Isengard. That's a huge gap. One beautiful trample coming into the crossbowmen. And crossbowmen are out of the game. I mean, he was switching to the old ground stands just to not get one-shotted. The damage from the wolf riders is not the greatest. They are indeed the worst character unit in the game. But it's okay. They can still be used for harassment. They are mobile. They can trample. And all of that for a unit you can recruit literally at the beginning of the game. How can someone be in just like 20 seconds? That's why he will not tell us what his gaming chair is. Dude, guys, when I want to pee, I need to just put my schlong out of the window. You know what I'm saying? I can pee in the bathroom while I'm still sitting on my chair. I know you are jealous, but it's like a... It's like a gift. And I curse at the same time. Um... 450 command points for Engmar and 350 command points for Isengard. The mill is going to be taken down. Remember, Bambi has still the chance to dodge one of the games. Maru was dodging already in the previous game. He has no more dodge available. <laughs> I know what it means.
by Vorchan from Engmai Song cooldown. But he has almost 9 power points in the bank. So one more and he will be able to summon his own orcs on top of the enemy army. And there are still some Gundabad orcs. Maru is now this time actually in this game using the map quite nicely and wisely. Like he's moving from the bottom side, from the top side. There was a problem from Maru against Fairy. He was never doing that. He was always focusing the same area over and over again. And his opponents were actually able to expand offensively and never getting punished for that. But in this game, he's doing much, much better. Okay, I mean, the good thing about this situation for Engma is look how many extrovers he has on the field. You see that? That's a lot of extrovers. The mill is going to be taken down. That's only one single mill, though, against a buffed army, which cannot really approach. In this situation, you need war riders. You need them to trample them. He has like zero pikemen, as we are talking. Zero. Zero backup. One or two uh, war riders could actually be so massive in these situations. But he actually goes for the level 2 clan setting for the white man extrovers. And a level 1 Uruk pit. That's all he has. He has 10 power points now. Engma is going to go for the orc summon. And Isengard has 6 power points collected after the War Chan and Kree So power point department is looking the same. Engma will be summoning the orcs defensively. And War Chanting them right off the bat. That's a huge army War Chanted. And there comes a trample into the backline. Crossbowman has like 0 defense. Trample. Don't waste time. Holy moly. Let's go. One trample to rule them all. Actually, he was kind of slowing them, them down with the Whiteman Extrovers. That's very important too, because Whiteman Extrovers, they are cheaper. They cost 250, and Crossbowman, they cost 350. So when you have to make a choice of which unit you want to lose, you know, obviously losing the cheaper unit is better. Hey Yoda, glad to see you in the chat. How many wins does Bambi, you know, let's let's say best of seven. It means there is maximum amount of seven games. In order to win a best of seven, you need to win four games. Oh, the traumas is going down. The orc summon, they're going to be gone very soon. I mean, they have still time left, though. The counter push, the mill is open for a potential attack. There is a level two mill. There is a level two mill. And there is a level 2 mill. So he has like 3 level 2 mills. One of them is almost level 3. Kribin is going to be used once again for the defense. The level 2 furnace are going down. The level 1 furnace is going down. The level 1 furnace is going down. And Isengard, ladies and gentlemen, is dropping down to 200 command points only. Bambi is out. Like, he has nothing. He has not a single furnace left on the field anymore. The amount of damage he can deal is not going to be the same damage he just received. Snowbind is gonna save the level 2 mill. Engma seems very strong against Isengard too. <laughs> the builder. <laughs> Run, yabba dabba do. Oh, he's like letting them live. Alright. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, it you know it always breaks my heart, breaks my heart when I see a builder dying like that. You know I don't like when hardworking builders in BVME dying like that. It's painful. And yeah, I don't know why he's not calling it GG yet. I don't think he can turn this game around. Maybe with devastation, maybe with devastation, but I, I don't think so. Like, what can you do against that? That's a huge army, and you have like this. Against like this, you know? Almost 10 power points. And Bambi is a fighter. He is not going to give up until the very end. If he can somehow find a magical way of dealing with this army of Engma, maybe, maybe can do something. Maybe. But you cannot really go for the weapon of Dun and Summon. You can't. You need to go for the devastation. That's the only way you can recover economically. Let's, let's see if he can defend this. I mean, the good thing is he has a buff, but Engma doesn't need to take a fight. Engma has also buff, right? Yeah. So he can now group all of them together. And once again, I think the mistake here for Isengard is that he has no war riders on the field. Yet. But it's about to be changed. But is this going to be a change very soon? We have 850 command points for Engma versus 300 for Isengard. 
and he's going for the Viperman of Dunn and will be summoning them on top of the enemy units. But they're gonna die. They're gonna die. Like, it's a waste of 10 power points as we are talking. And Bambi doesn't say a word. Dude, they don't even call it GG, guys. We have the blue Dwarven player, Bambi against the red Engmar player, Maru. Who was already able to win as Engmar in the previous game against Isengard. Let's see how they wanna win against Dwarves in this game number 4. If he wins, we will be able, we will be able to jump into the first tiebreaker in the best of 7 in the upcoming game. If Ectilion wins, he will need only one more win after that one to move to the semi-finals of the loser's bracket in the spring tournament for $1,300 in full fees against either Ave Havi or Fairy. Okay, hey, leave my friend Pito alone. Pito is a nice dude. We have a 4 mil opening for Maru actually. And the Ectilion is building up two mineshafts, three mineshafts, Hall of Warriors. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> it was funny, you know, we were trying to actually convert this map into the BFME one. <laughs> <laughs> but everything guys when you put this map and when you try to open this map in the bfme one vault builder it looks so funny everything is missing you have like only the layout everything is black everything is like empty naked you know nothing it's unbelievable the amount of stuff you have actually additionally in the bfme two vault builder versus the bfme one vault builder is something else like there is so much stuff missing and rise of twitch king is so lucky because you know, BFME 2 can make maps and then you can just copy paste them into your own game. But it's not working the same way in BFME 1. BFME 1 feels like a stepson, you know what I'm saying? It feels like a stepdaughter. Like the stepbrother, you know? Stepbrother, I'm stuck. Step Boromir. To Hall of the Kingsmen after four meals. And Hall of Warriors into the Fort Works very early for Dwarves. Doesn't wanna... Oh, did he actually use Rallying Call on them? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he used Rallying Call on them to actually creep this. That's something you see in BFME 2 a lot. People creeping with buffs, but in, in Rise of the Witch King, you don't really need to do that. Because creeping in Rise of the Witch King is not a big challenge, you know? Especially Warclay can be crapped by orcs. Like, it's very easy. And wasting your buff like this, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Oh, he's gonna creep also at the bottom side. Hey, Benzi, welcome. Glad to see you in the chat. Who won yesterday? Smoky or Sauron? I watched like 4 2 Smoke Elite. Uh, you, you gotta watch it. <laughs> you gotta watch it again, Crafty. It's on my YouTube, on my Twitch channel. I don't wanna spoil it. Just w watch it yourself. <laughs> because if you was only here for until like 4 2 situation, trust me, you miss a lot of games. Glorifying the light of hope. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The mineshaft is not going to be building up to full. The builder has to get out. I mean, actually. Uh, Bambi is not getting, you know, punished for that, that he was legit using his power point to creep a troll there. Because by the time the next fight is going to happen, he will have eventually his riding call back anyway. But the thing about the Dwarven faction is you cannot disengage. You cannot get away. You are the slowest unit in the game. Oh my goodness, what? He failed to creep and lost the battalion to the Warclayer. Remember when I was saying creeping in Rise of the Witch King is easy? But it's not that easy. <laughs> you know, it's not that easy doesn't really mean that you can just close your eyes you know you gotta just watch out a little bit what is the plan though i mean guys i'm telling you one thing you know what is good against against Ingmar when you play dwarves listen to me this unit demolisher that's so good <laughs> that's so good trust me on that one like you can trample them all every single one of them oh not like this with the battle organ though you will lose him yeah that's unfortunate. That's 800 gone, by the way, into the... <laughs> oh, I can smell salt. Salt, salt, salt. We have the red Engma player, Maru at the top side, versus the blue Eisengar player, Bambi at the bottom side. We have seen this matchup already one time, and Bambi lost this as Eisengar against Engmar, but he's not dodging. 
He doesn't want to dodge this. He has still one dodge available. And dude, guys, we have legit seen in every single game Engmar. We have seen Engmar against men. We have seen Engmar against Isengard twice now. We have seen Engmar against dwarves. Unbelievable. From seven factions, we see every single game in five out of five games Engmar faction. That's crazy. I think random is literally rigged, literally rigged. We have a mill into the Hall of the Kingsmen coming up into the second mill. On the other side, we see two furnaces, three furnaces coming up for Isengard player. He might once again start with the Warp Pit, just like he did, and that's going to be his plan. I mean, he was doing it also against Engma on the map Sakura Forest, but it was, not, it was not working out quite well. But this is a different map, and maps actually have a huge impact on the outcome of the game. And any matchup can be better or worse, depending on the map. For example, Goblin Faction will shine bright like a diamond on a map like this. And maybe a, a you know maybe a matchup which is normally a bad matchup for goblins won't be that bad anymore when they play on this map. So maps have a huge impact. What is a dodge? Dodge basically every every player in a in the series, in a best of seven or best of nine or whatever, has one dodge. Dodge means that you don't want to play a matchup, you can leave at the beginning of the game, you know? And you can do that only one single time. For example, the guy is the guys are loading in. He knows, okay, I'm Isengard against Engmar. I don't want to play this matchup. I can just leave the game. You can do that only one single time. That's what the dodge is all about. Oh my goodness, the builder. The builder is going to be... The, he's dead. Maru is doing it again. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. Rest in peace, the builder. Just kill him. You cannot defend this anyway. Just kill him. Kill him, dude. Why would you let him get away? Why would you let him... What is Bambi doing? <laughs> what is Bambi doing? What is Bambi doing? I don't know what he's doing. But it's not good what he's doing. Okay, Furnace number one is given up. He's gonna use the Rallying of Orchan on the crossbar man, but the Furnace number two is also down. If they can be fast, they can even take down the Furnace number 3. They are still buffed. They will take a lot of damage, but it's only one crossbow man. And they have still a full battalion of pikemen. Yes, surround it and you can take it down. What a start into the game, boys. What a start into the game number 5. Remember, it was 2-0 for Bambi. And if Maru keeps playing the way he did in the previous two games, he can win now in the game number 5-2. And from 0 to hero, just like that. The war packs they are trying to put counter pressure and i don't know i mean when you played this matchup already one time and you see you are struggling in this matchup a lot maybe but just maybe you shouldn't play it anymore when you have legit the chance to dodge and you have legit the chance that you can say no i'm out i don't want to play this matchup but you still play it then it's your fault so no blame on the matchup trust me on that one Builders cost 500. 500. So, when, unless you buy something on the fortress, you gotta pay 500 for that. And losing a builder early on, uh, you know, forces you to buy a second builder, which can be invested into buying like two battalion of Trailmaster, you know what I'm saying? Or build a second Hall of the Kingsman. Or build the Wolf Den. So, you basically lose a lot of momentum, but on top of the money you lose, you also lose time. Because on a map like this, you can expand extremely fast. And you can have one builder here, one builder here, you can expand in both ways. But you having to revive a builder is gonna cost you time. Which is at least as important as the money you are losing. Okay, so we have the, after a couple of minutes into the game, we have 450 command points available for Engma and 350 command points available for Isengard. He, did, he saw the builder. <laughs> like the builder was legit here when the war packs came out. And the fortress was shooting him down, you know? Very unfortunate still. Okay. Uh, the question is... I mean, now Isengard has to make something happen. He has to deal some economical damage to Engma. That's very important. You can also... On a map like this, though, you can expand offensively. You can hide your furnaces. For example, you can build one here. You can build one here. And then you can build a couple of them here on this area. And Maru... You know, this map requires a lot of macro and a lot of different pathways you know you cannot use the same pathway and hope for the hope for the best because if your opponent is expanding on other sides you will still get a lot of command points and also money so it's important to use the entire map the map in your favor 
Beautiful trample with the wolf riders. Nice. Well done. Nice clumping from Bambi though. Nice clumping. But he's gonna get outspammed here. Because it's a very bad spot to fight at. You know, when you cannot kill them fast enough. Because the second you deal with them, he will get more and more units recruited at the same time. And now the second one of the Kingsman is coming up. The only good thing here for, for Ateleon is that he's at least buying some time for himself, you know. But he was even using Warchant there for no reason, literally. This was a bad Warchant. And Kree being too, like he's fully committing on this fight. Which is already over. You need War Riders. You need also <laughs> Clan Sitting. You need something. I don't know what you need. But you gotta try to deal some damage. If he can take down this mill, it's gonna be a good situation for Isengard. He needs that. He definitely, desperately needs that. Delay? Yes, we have one minute delay. Yeah, obtain humanities in the chat. Yes, obtain humanity. Welcome. And just in case you don't know, guys, it's only possible. I mean, the cash price is possible because of obtain humanity. He is the one who was actually donating all this money, one thousand three hundred dollars, to make this spring tournament. So the biggest tournament in terms of cash prize in the Rise of the Witch King. So thank you very much once again. Appreciate it. In the name of players, because I, I'm not participating myself. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it's embarrassing if you, you know, participate in the same tournament you are hosting. And then it would be it would be feeling like rigged if I would be winning the tournament. I don't want to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be that guy. You know? I'm a selfless person. Okay, guys? I'm a self... <laughs> I am not participating... To not embarrass players like Sauron, Smoky, Ave Have. To not embarrass them. That's the reason. The mill is gonna be taken down. Oh, the builder is trapped too. That's unfortunate. That's like a win-win situation for Isengard. Dude, Bambi is doing good in this matchup though. 550 command points against 500. The gap is not big anymore. Isengard can still get to the mid game i think mid game spike for isengard is insane when you get like 800 command points then you can start getting a lot of cash then you can build like two uruk pits you know you can spam uruks all the time and they will be outclassing the big units from engma by you know by far any chance of editing games on your channel um i did editing videos on my youtube channel but for me, it's very hard to get this mod to work, brother, you know? <laughs> like, the amount of technical problems I had when I was trying to make this game work on my PC is something else. Like, you need to have 2.01, disable the minimal music, disable the timer, put this on BFME 2, download mini images, mount the images to this. Why? <laughs> it's so hard. Like, I legit lost like 50% of my hair trying to download and install it in mod on my PC. And then after, you know, playing a couple of times, I had to re-boot my PC. Like, I had to re, you know, upload everything to my PC, like a restart, full restart of my Windows, which was forcing me to de delete everything that I had. And then when I was trying to reinstall the Edin mod, it was not working anymore, you know? It was driving me crazy. And so who won the smoke game? Sauron won. Sauron was able to win 5-4. It was a phenomenal series, Obtain Humanity, just in case you couldn't watch it yet. But it's on my, you know, last video on you, on Twitch. It was a phenomenal series, back and forth. Smokey was leading 3-0. It was 3-1, 3-2. Smokey was having 4-2 lead. Smokey was only one win away from winning the finals of the winner bracket. Then Sauron was able to make it 4-3, 4-4, and then the last game to 5-4. Back and forth, back and forth. It was like watching like a... Grand finals of the football teams, you know, it was really, really fun. So I would recommend to everybody who didn't, who couldn't watch it yesterday, to rewatch it on my channel. It was pretty, pretty intense, and that's not even over yet. That's only the final. That was only the finals of the winner bracket. Smokey is still in the losers finals. So if Smokey wins, he can still work his way up for the revenge match against Sauron. Uh, Inceptive, thanks for the primers for the first time subbing to the channel, my man. Thank you so much for the huge support. Subscribe. Means a lot. Welcome Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. Engmar is winning again, boys. Engmar is actually everywhere. Look at the minimap. Look at this. Endless waves of units. 
Isengard has to deal with. Thing. She might be reading the chat and sometimes she's doing that. She's not able to understand everything, but she knows what wife mean my wife means. So when for example it's much but something says we only have want to have some fun woman chill, she might put this in the Google Translator <laughs> and then she will cut the internet connection and the rest in peace stream. You know what I'm saying? So don't say something something like this. Uh Morgan is on the field, Engmar is gonna see very soon. Engmar is gonna see very soon. Uh, the Blammer Mills, they are, not, they are not very good. You know, they are not very good. They don't give you any command points. And they are only very good when you have the field of fires. 
Like, some players, they like to build them. Luka, for example, from Poland, he likes to build them every single time. When he plays Isengard, when he has like 500-600 command points available, he starts building them to get additional money, but I think they are really only really good when you have to fuel the fires from Isengard Spellbook. He has now the giant summon. There we go. Giant will be special summoned. In the siege on the fortress is going to begin. And that's going to be the GG moment. There is nothing to stop them. I think. Waldo can stop the war riders. They won't deal too much damage to them. You need pikemen or archers to kill them fast enough. And the oryx will be summoned too. Just to keep those giants protected. One giant might go down to Sharku. But it's okay. And yeah. He's going to just leave everything. And Bambi has been defeated three games in a row. He was leading 2-0. And now he just lost three games in a row. <laughs> Dude. How is this possible, Chad? How is this possible that we see three times in a row the same matchup? Maru cannot dodge this though. Maru is playing this time the Isengard faction. And every time we have seen this matchup, Isengard was getting stomped by Engmar. Engmar was crushing Isengard. Bambi could dodge, but why would he? Because Engmar is clearly very strong against Isengard. We have the red Isengard player Maru at the top side versus the blue Engmar player Bambi. Also known as Ictil, you at the bottom side of the map. Ports of Prunin. Accidentally. Yeah, yeah, I see you, Eisengasm. Accidentally. <laughs> okay. If you, have a, if you get a wife that allows or accepts you to play games seven hours a day, you are a lucky man, no matter how you choose to turn around. And you should keep her. I'm not playing seven hours a day video games. <laughs> I'm not. I'm clearly not. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean, yes. Two furnaces into the clan setting, into the third furnace, is the build order from Isengard. So unlike his opponent, uh, you know, when Ectelium was playing Isengard, he was always opening with a war pit. But this Isengard player, Maru, likes to open with a clan setting. To recruit some wild men of Dan land. The problem is that, uh, you know, the problem is that Engmar can easily counter them by just building the wolf den. And then you can recruit some wolf riders and trample them down. And they have no more threat on you, you know? Meal is hidden around the mountain at the bottom left side. WTF is dead again? Yeah, man, I know, right? I know, right? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Three times in a row. In, a, in out of six, out of six games, we have seen three times the same matchup, and there are seven different factions and, like, I don't know, like fifty different matchup possibilities. But we get the chance to see that three times in a row. I mean, Isengasm can't complain. He just likes to see Isengard, but I think he also doesn't like to see Isengard losing. So I think Isengard has a, has like bad chances to win against Engmar, and that's what I'm talking about. Engmar feels just overall extremely solid you know what i'm saying Ingmar doesn't doesn't seem to have like a really bad matchup they win most of the time the only matchup i've seen them struggling was against mordor not even that much Ingmar seems to ex some seems to be extremely reliable you know and yet again we have not even seen the full potential of Ingmar yet you know Ingmar has many many unused units sorcerers for example or the witch king is a hero you know snow trolls Heal trolls. I mean, we don't really need to see them for Engmar to win. Engmar can only win with the units inside this one building. Okay, the furnace is gonna be taken down, right? Right? Oh, it's gonna be close. Nah, it's gone. And also this one? The Trial Master. Oh, the Trial Master is down. Okay. So he lost one single furnace. That's not too bad for Isengard. But he also losing this Weapon of Dunland. The thing about losing Weapon of Dunland is, in compared to Uruks, that's more that's more okay, you know? Because Uruks, they cost more than twice as much. So one Uruk costs almost as much as three of these Weapon of Dunland. Shanks doing something? What do you mean with something? <laughs> Uh, 400 command points available against 500 command points available. Engmar is... I mean, Engmar seems to... I don't know what... Like, for me, it's hard to tell why is this like it is. Like, I, I don't know, guys. But what do you guys think? Why is this like it is? Why is Isengard struggling so much against Engmar? What do you think is the problem? Or what do you think is the reason? You know, why do you think 
that Engmar is countering Isengard. Like, I don't know why. Are Uruks just too weak against Gundabad Orcs? Are Wolf Riders just too reliable early on to deal with for Isengard? I don't know. Okay, the mill has been destroyed. That's a that's a great army from Isengard, but keep in mind that he has no buff. He has only debuff, which is also on cooldown. And there is only one single pikeman, and all this army are actually white men out unnet. Because and then you can just turn them into the wolf rider now. He has one, two battalion here, three battalion actually. And one of them can be turned into the wolf rider and trample them down. Like they are separated now, right? But he's turning them all into the extrovers, all of them. That means he will be losing now two mills in total. Torches. Hitting like a truck, by the way, with torches. That's unbelievable. Crazy amount of damage, boys. The furnace here is going to be also taken down from Isengard. But the Wolf Riders, the, the Trial Master. Oh, hello, Darkness, my old friend. That's that's not good. Actually, the class setting stat is, seems to be much, much more reliable in compared to the War Pit opening against Engma. Random in Rise of the Witch King never felt very random, to be honest, yeah. I think what we're gonna do in the in the next tournament is, if we will actually host, like, another random random mirror tournament, we will actually make this with the spin. So, basically, we will have two wheels with all the seven factions inside the wheel. Then we're gonna spin the wheel and make it random this way. And then they gotta play whatever the wheel tells them to play, you know? Okay. But also, there is the chance. I mean, obviously, there is a chance because the, the chances are calculated for each game. So basically, if you get like one time Engma, there is not less chance of you getting another Engma in the upcoming game. The chances are calculated always individually, you know, after each game. Big War Chant, Wolf Bags, Extrovers, and Wolf Riders. Now, the question is how much damage can he actually deal? The furnace here can be taken down. The furnace in the front is going to be definitely taken down. Isengard is not in position. He was creeping the troll there and now he's going to try to deal some counter damage the pikemen are separated the builder from bambi he's not paying attention to it oh no he's paying attention now he will get in safety you need to get some wolf packs now to counter this pikemen one wolf pack can easily take them out easily but what's the matter if you lose your uruk pit he lost the clan setting already he will be losing the uruk pit too that's a lot of damage to the production building this time from isengard player maru I remember Isengard had good win rate against Ingmar in Champions League. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think uh, Goblins, the only faction that was having, no, like, a good win rate against Isengard was actually <laughs> Goblins. Goblins were smashing Isengard most of the time. So I think Isengard seems to struggle against spammy factions. Long story short. Okay, the wolf tank got freezed by Engma, but he will be losing his mill for that. The extrovers are dealing constantly damage. That means they will eventually go down those units. And the Isengard lost the Uruk pit in clan setting, but he was already able to rebuild the Uruk pit and also rebuild the clan setting. So after the first couple of minutes into the game, we can see Maru is up to 475 command points in total. The wild men are taking care of this building and look at this. Every time they are hitting it, they will actually steal money from Engma. So, 475 against 350. Bambi is down to 350 command points only, guys. Only 350 command points. And Isengard is doing a phenomenal job. And the question is now about how much damage can this army deal to Isengard's economy. The level 2 furnace is open for the attack. And Isengard is playing it way too aggressively, in my opinion. Way too aggressively. Like, he's always going all out. And kind of lets himself unprotected. The Felvin is coming in clutch. He will be eventually able to save his 
Call of the Kingsman. We also see now some Black Oryx coming from the inn as an additional Swordman unit. The Furnace level 2 has been destroyed. And also this Furnace is under attack. So 500 command points for Isengard, 350 command points for Engma. Engma is dropping down to 300 command points as we are talking. And this is not looking good for Bambi because look at this. The Wolf Den is one hit away from getting destroyed. One single hit. The Felwind, uh, the Snowbind is on cooldown for the next one minute. And even with the Snowbind, he will just be able to freeze that. But Snowbind, unlike the Rebuild, doesn't heal your structure. That's not possible. Ice Nest, two expensive units, yes. I think that's also one of the main reasons, to be honest with you. Why this matchup is actually hard. But you can see with the cheap units on the other side, with this Whiteman of Tannen, you can actually make stuff happen. Because they are much more affordable. So this, uh, this army is still strong, but it's much, much cheaper. Because he has now Black Oryx. They cost 100 less, in com 150 less in compared to the Uruks. And yes, you know, this weapon of the Unend, they cost way less than Uruks. So long story short, this seems to be much more affordable. Maybe not as strong, but definitely still very strong, you know? And it's a hero, 94. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. How long is the delay? We have one minute delay in the stream today. Pure deck. Only one minute. So three minutes felt just too long from the previous stream. So we lowered that to one minute only. He's going to use the froze, uh, Snowbind to freeze this one. But he's going to lose the level one mil. This mid is going to be taken down as well. Engmar is dropping down to 200 command points. All he got are production buildings. That's all he got. His command points kept. He's poor. He has no money. He's losing all the units he has on the field. And yeah. the There comes the Orc summon boys. The weapon of the and summon from Isengard. I mean... And he's going to commit against the Fortress. The Fortress eventually won't get destroyed. But keep in mind, you see the money from Engma boys at the bottom left side? It's going down, 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 down. So he's losing money as those Vipers are dealing damage to your economy. The mill is going to be building up and destroyed right after. There is no command points available for Engma. He's going to drop down once again to 200 command points only. Isengard will eventually lose something, but I think it's okay. The Fortress is under attack. With Wildman of Time and smashing it to the ground. The Hall of the Kingsman is going down. And this is not going to be only the end of this game. But also the end of the series in Maru. The Russian player is moving on to the semi-finals of the loser's bracket. If he wins now against either Avihave or Maru. Or not against himself. Against Avihave or against Fairy. He will be able to move to the finals against Mr. Smog. 